I'm Robert Williams from MetalRules.com and joining me tonight in Austin, Texas is Brian Werder and Stephen Harger of Prosthetic Recording Artists in Vernion. How are you guys doing today? What's up, dude? Awesome, man. So you guys just recently released your second album, Genesis to Nemesis, following up 2007's Symphony of Suffering CD. Um, tell me a little bit about, this is a concept album, right? What's the story behind the lyrical content on there? Um, the whole story is the story of the Bible from beginning to end, just exposing everything from you know, biblical, you know, conf uh, contradictions to historical inadequacies. You know, for example, the story of Zia Sudra was a story that was told um, for thousands and thousands of years before the Christians raped it and turned it into the Noah story. Um, you know, not to mention the whole legacy of Cain. Uh, obviously, the song Immaculate Deception being about the birth of Jesus and how that's all pretty much bullshit. Uh, the song Graven Image is about how, according to certain texts, the uh, Judas never betrayed Christ. You know, Judas is actually ordered by Christ to turn him in, which means Christ committed a mortal sin, which means he could never have been the Savior because Christians believe if you kill yourself, you go straight to hell. So how can he be the Savior and commit a mortal sin? Um, it also goes on to talk about how, you know, the second commandment, thou shalt not kneel to any graven image. Well, what the fuck do you call your cross? Your cross is a graven image. You all fucking kneel to it. Um, then we end with Revelations, which is just meant to be epic. Um, and then we were sitting around getting high and realized we needed a song about Moses and shit, and we never didn't even think about it. And so we decided to do a cover of uh, Creeping Death, you know, to cover the whole Moses chapter of the Bible. And we had none other than uh, Odorous Urungus himself doing guest vocals on it. And uh, it was a cool fucking time, man. It was really fun to work with him. So, like, like you mentioned, with Creeping <coughs> Death, you had Odorous. You also had some other ex exciting guest appearances on the new album. Uh, Eric Rutan of Hate Eternal and Morbid Angel being one of them. Tell me about uh, how the collaborations on the new album with the other guys came about and what it was like working with them. Uh, we were just in the studio with uh, Eric and he was coming in and out and checking you know, what was going on. And we just kind of asked him, you want to do a line or two? And he's like, sure. So Not cocaine, the actual like, singing line singing, or two. Yeah. <laughs> so mentioning you were in the studio with, with Eric over at uh, Mana yeah. Studios, Brian, I know you said in a, in a previous interview a few months back that the original plan was to work with death metal icon James Murphy. Why the change in venue to Mana Studios? Um, I gotta plead the fifth on that one um, for legal reasons, but uh, it wasn't a, a good environment for us to be there anymore. So we decided to go back home to where we mastered the first album. You know, I work with somebody like Eric and Brian that we were a lot more comfortable working with. So. so I love the new music video you guys got for Graven Image. Now tell me, is that too gory to be on most uh, music video outlets like Fuse or Hit yep. Ball? Oh yeah, oh, and that's exactly why we did it that way. You know, it's fuck, fuck that bullshit, man. You know, I, I, everyone's like, well, you're not going to get on MTV. I don't care if I'm not on MTV. I don't want my band being played alongside some of the other shit that they play on there. You know, I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to fucking be on tour with the Devil Wars Prada. You know, that, that's not who we are. That's not what I want to be associated with. You know, and I believe in... Uh, how do I word this eloquently? I don't think artists should be told what they have to do to be able to be played on a certain channel. I think music is art, and your art should always be whatever you want it to be. And when you start to limit that and say, well, okay, well, no, your art can't be this, or your art can't be that. You know, oh, if you do this, this isn't going to get played that. Well, that's not art anymore. That's fabricated shit that people are making for the sole reason to uh, make these companies happy. And I don't fucking write music for fucking anybody else. I write music for me. And I'm not going to fucking sit there and diminish w my ultimate vision of what I have for everything based on the opinions of a bunch of assholes on MTV. How much creative input did you guys were involved with for the music video? Oh, hands on, 100% the entire time. Uh -huh. From from conception through editing, you know, and we were right there for the entire process. Uh, let's talk about touring with the Lunatics from Outer Space, otherwise known as Gore. How, how did you guys originally hook up with Gore, and what's the tour been like so far? 
Um, yeah, we got hooked up with uh, Gore because we had uh, you know Odor singing on the album, you know, which was a big, big plus and helped us out. And uh, well, how did you guys meet before that? Uh, just at shows and stuff, you know. I, I've known Mr. Brocky for quite a while now, and uh, just happened to make a generic call to him one day, and he was totally fucking down for it. And then uh, as far as being on the road, well, shit, go for it. Uh, it's been fun, other than a few vehicle problems we've been having. Uh, like <laughs> four vehicles we've gone through in a month. Uh, it's been great, you know, been playing to a thousand people every night, so... It's been a lot of fun. There's been a lot of women at the shows, too, yeah. which is something we're not used to being in a death metal. <laughs> the pussy on this tour has been exceptional. Now, Texas has got to have some kind of special meaning for you guys. I know last time you guys passed through, took some time to visit Dimebag Daryl's grave, and I understand this time through you got to hang with one of your, your, your main musical inspiration, King Diamond. What was that like? Um, it was kind of like being invited out with Anton LaVey. Um, it was really a surreal experience. I'm not going to say where we hung out with him at, because that's kind of private, as well as the meeting that we had with him was kind of private, too. But it was a lot like being invited out with the LeVay, like I said, man. You know, King is, I mean, I got him right there. You know, he's one of my all-time biggest music icons. And to be able to sit down with the guy face-to-face -face for about three hours and just listen to the stories he had, you know, and just advice that he had for us as a young band and shit was really, really fucking one of the coolest experiences of my life. It definitely was. It'll sound, that's definitely a memory I'll take to my grave. So after this current tour wraps up, um, what's next on the agenda? Maybe work on some new music, take a dessert break? Or? No, you know us, brother. Fucking 250 shows in the next 12 months. We ain't fucking around. We're going to tour the living fuck out of this album. Uh, we'd like to be right back out in the U.S. in January, February, do Europe right after that, come back to the U.S. again, go right back to Europe all next summer, come back and then go into the studio sometime next year and crank out the next album. We already got the concept and the foundation laid for the next album, already a few songs deep on it. So, so you've had some shifts in lineup since the last time you passed through. Tell me about everyone you got in your band now, where you found them, who they might have played with before, how they ended up in Infernion. Oh, this guy off uh, Craigslist. Hey, yeah. He sent me an email and I went out and tried out. Then about two weeks later, their other guitarist, uh, I don't know quite what happened there. He was sucking dick. He, yeah, he just kind of yeah, completely I, changed genres on us. I caught him cock and mouth, you know. <laughs> was like you're and fired. so, yeah, he was gone. So I was jamming with my friend Taylor when they sent me the email because we were looking for a bass player and a singer. And I said, well, my friend Taylor plays. He's like, all right, I'll send him over. He came out, tried out, and got in, too. So. And Jeremy, we always knew Jeremy was going to be done after the album. You know, that had been in the works for a while. He's a family man now. He's got two kids, married. And just really couldn't do any of the touring commitment that we needed from him. But, you know, at the same point, the guy had been in the band for two and a half years. He paid his dues, sweating it out in the van with us, touring for little or no money. And um, we felt he was very deserving to still be on the album. We still really, really wanted him to do it, you know, because he was like a brother to us, man. Like I said, he paid his dues and cut his teeth with us out here for two years on the road. So he was very, in my opinion, very deserving of, you know, being a member of Infernion for the release. Even though we knew he was going to leave right after, we ended up getting Adam Sagan from Into Eternity, who is one of my oldest and best friends of many, many years, going back, God, since I was a teenager. And um, Adam used to live with me for quite a while. Um, Adam and uh, Bill Hudson from Celador. And that's how we got Bill Hudson to do the guest appearance because Bill's just kind of hanging out there with all of us at all the time. Uh, same thing with John Slaughter, who plays in Caldera with Bill, which is a fucking amazing band. You know, with uh, two guitar virtuosos. Um, and they're just fucking amazing. Go check them out. And C-O-L-D-E-R-A, -E -E Caldera. Um, and Adam's just done an amazing fucking job, man. You know, it was really cool. Jeremy helped him get trained in because uh, he's right down the street from us. We're still the best of friends with Jeremy and everything. I wish him nothing but the best of luck. So, Well, Stephen, Brian, thanks so much for taking the time to talk metal with me today. Before we wrap this up, any last words for your fans watching at home? Um, smoke crack, worship Satan. Um, kill your parents, rape your dog, sacrifice your little sister, Lucifer. Um, Thank you.